He's waiting for you, Irishman. Up those stairs. Before I go, I want some kind of explanation. Explanation? Yes, what's all this about? I get stopped in the street and given a message that a character called Damio wants to see me. Now, I've never heard of Damio, a stranger here about. Don't worry, he'll explain. Go up those stairs and down the passage left. It's the fourth door. And there's no need to knock. He's expecting you. But, uh... What's this about? What's it concern? You must tell me that. I'm not going to walk into any kind of trap. I can only tell you it concerns murder, Mr. Murphy. It concerns the perfect murder. Time. The silent herald of life and death. Success or failure. The unseen force that measures man's destiny, reaching its most fateful moment as it slowly strikes. The eleventh. Ah, good evening, Mr. Murphy. I'm so delighted you came. Well, sit down, sit down. A sherry, perhaps? Well, I don't mind if I do. But uh, first let me introduce myself. I am Damio de Braga. Damio de Braga? Yes, it seems familiar. Well, I have been in the news recently. Oh, that's right. You led an uprising, didn't you, against the government and it was crushed. Uh, temporarily crushed. Uh, nothing of any permanence, Mr. Murphy. Uh, let's be honest with each other, shall we? No breath of what is spoken here leaves these four walls. You agree? <laughs> well, that depends. Depends? Yes, it depends on why you want to see me and uh, how much you're going to pay me. Ah, I see. You're a very cautious man, Mr. Murphy. Well, I think it pays to be cautious. Just as well. It suits my purpose all the better. I can't have men who are indiscreet. Men of your type aren't easy to find, believe me. Now... Uh, in this dossier here are the details of your life. Details of my life? Now, see here, oh, wait a minute. It's all here, Mr. Murphy, in this dossier. You have no secrets, none whatsoever. For instance, I know perfectly well that you, I think the word is, skipped the country because of an unsolved murder standing to your credit. What the devil do you know about that? It was a girl, wasn't it, who became a little difficult. You shot her and you were too quick and clever for the police. Now, oh, that's what I like. A clever man. That's so very rare. And then, of course, there was that embezzlement, wasn't there? You managed to talk yourself out of that rather cleverly. You've got highly inflammable material there. It won't be used at all. That is, once my project is over, you can have the pleasure of burning it, Mr. Murphy. Now, I need your help, and I'm prepared to pay you handsomely for it. Hmm. Well, what help do you want? Before I answer that question, Mr. Murphy, may I ask you one? Go on. Do you know anything about the politics in this country? No, I'm not interested in politics. All the better. Most excellent. I think I'm going to like you, Mr. Murphy. In fact, I think we're going to get on very, very well together. Now, shall we get down to business? I'm waiting. And don't forget, you said you wanted my help. You also said you were prepared to pay for it. Uh, handsomely was the way you expressed it. What do you want me to do? I want you to kill the president. You want me to what? Yes, kill the president and all his underlings. I want the entire government eradicated, like that. You want me to kill them? Kill every one of them. And when you've done that, I take over. On this occasion, my uprising won't be a failure. <laughs> Are you serious? Do I look as if I jest? But this is fantastic. Not fantastic at all. The workless crowds have already demonstrated against the president and the government. They need someone to lead them, and I am that person. But I can do nothing until the government has been erased. I see. But uh, just how do you expect me to perform this uh, mass elimination? Now, don't forget I've only killed one girl in my time. I've never gone in for murder wholesale. First of all, will you do it? Oh, yes, I'll do it, but uh, I want a written guarantee about the money. In fact, I'm not sure I don't want the money in advance. I'm willing to give it to. You mean that? I never say a thing unless I mean it. I'm willing to pay you in English money. That suits you better, doesn't it? What about ten thousand pounds? Ten thousand? 
You are tempted? I'm with you all the way. I'd kill a whole army for that. Ten thousand pounds, that's a lot of money. Well, there's a great deal at stake. My dreams, my whole future. Now listen to me carefully, Mr. Murphy. I'll tell you my plans. I thought the Irishman interesting. Yes, I could imagine that. He's your type, isn't he? Yes. Never forget, Sophia, that you belong to me. You are part of my plans. The President's lady. Exactly. I've groomed you for the role, and you'll play it to perfection. I'm not sure I want to play the role, Daniel. A president's lady? That will mean I'll merely have to sit by your side, smile graciously, and do what I'm told. And is there a better life for a woman? Better than that? I was a fool to ever be trapped by you, wasn't I? I took you out of the slums, my dear girl. I've made you into something. You have beautiful clothes, you eat the best food, you mix in the higher society... If I'd left you where I'd found you, what would you be doing now? I would at least call my soul my own. And I dare say I'd be happier. Now look, Sophia, I don't want talk like this from you. So, because you don't want this talk from me, I have to obey you, yes? Yes. And this is how it will be always, obeying you? Precisely. And in return, you will have a very good life. I demand complete obedience. I hope this perfect murder of yours goes wrong, Danio. I hope that above all else. That's enough. I hope the president escapes. And when he does, he routs you as he did before and sends you packing into the mountains like the, like the curl you are. I hope this happens. I'd watch your tongue, Sophia. You belong to the cave somehow. It suits you up there. This life isn't for you. The president is an old man. Some say he's a very good man. He's brought many reforms. He's an old fool and he's being used by the others. He's no more than a mouthpiece, a tool. He makes no decisions himself. Yet we've been at peace. So, you approve of the president, hmm? You're an admirer of his, perhaps. He is an old man. Exactly. An old man. Too old. A man who is young and virile needs to take over. A man such as you. A man such as me, yes. You. You will lead this country into chaos. That from you, Sophia. If anyone else spoke those words, there'd be only one punishment for them. I know. I know. Death. The big man talking. Off with a head or a bullet in her back. Oh, damn you. I don't know why you've changed this way. When we first met, you were, you were so different. You were good and gentle. You weren't ambitious like this. I've always had these ambitions and these plans. Oh, don't you understand, Sophia? I will be the most powerful man in this country, in the world, maybe. It'll be Damio de Braga. People will look up to me. I'll be like a king. All I ask is that you share with me, that's all. No. No, thank you. Not if you plan to get there with murder, with the help of a hired assassin. Oh, I may have been born in the gutter, Damio. Maybe you did rescue me. But at least the people of the gutter have a code of behavior. We don't kill and murder to get where we want to go. I'm getting tired of this conversation. I've had enough. I suppose this is the way life with you will be, Danio. You will dismiss me like a slave when it suits you. I don't want that sort of life. No, thank you. If you go ahead with this crazy plan of yours, I don't marry you. You do as I say. I am not your slave. Not yet. And there's another thing. If you were going to do the killing yourself, I might have some respect for you. But as it is, you hire some Irishman and pay him to do it. Naturally. Because you're too frightened to take the risk yourself. That's why if the Irishman is caught, he gets shot. Not you. Oh, no. It had nothing whatever to do with you. Some other fool gets caught for your crime. That's what I don't like, Danio. And it's not the way it used to be. It's a pity the dreams of power could change a man. All this talk of yours will change once I'm in power. Just think what it'll mean to you, Sophia. Just think. I am thinking. Possibly for the first time in my life. And my thoughts aren't happy, Danio. They're filled with the gravest foreboding and shadows of death. Now, this is a plan of the President's official residence. Now, you see, we've dug a tunnel. A so. tunnel? 
Well, you're surprised. Well, I didn't think it'd be a tunnel. You mean it, it goes right under here? That's right. Yes. It's taken considerable time, patience, and money. Uh, and the exit? The president's bedroom. His what? His bedroom. The residence is single story. Now, all you have to do is to push up the floorboards, and even they've been loosened. Well, this is certainly well planned. Uh, Damio Dobaga is the perfect organizer. His plans never go wrong. I see. And uh, will he be there? Uh, the president, I mean. The president is a man of habit. Unless there's some official function, he retires to bed punctually at 11. And that's when you step in and uh, eliminate him. No one will be aware of what's happened until the next morning. What about his wife? Well, you'll have to attend to her as you think fit. And the rest of the government? Simple. There's an informal gathering at a private residence. At 12 o'clock, two petrol bombs will explode simultaneously. <laughs> Exit government and friends. Mm. You will agree that the planning is perfect. Ah, it's too perfect, too slick. Ah, nothing will go wrong. Once you start thinking like that, friend, you're headed for trouble. Plenty can go wrong, and maybe it might. Let's wait and see, shall we? All right, let's do that. Let's wait and see. Well, what do you think of our tunnel, Mr. Murphy? It's quite a luxurious job. Everything I do, Mr. Murphy, impresses people. Well, how long did it take to carve out this effort? Many, many months. It even has air conditioning. We have to make sure that our friends were comfortable while they worked here. It's a devil of a long one, too. Mm, it extends under the street to two houses and a small park. No one suspects of its existence. That's the thing that makes me so proud. No one suspects. Because the people who helped to create this masterpiece will never talk. And just what do you mean by that? Just that. They won't ever talk. Damio! What the devil? That's Sophia's voice. Where are you? Back here, Damio. No, don't try and shine the torch. You can't see me. I'm well concealed. But I thought I'd tell you, Damio, you're going to take a very active part in the assassination. What the blazes do you mean? You thought you would push the mad Irishman into the president's bedroom. You thought you would perform the murder while you and Henrik rest back along the tunnel and then blow it up. What the devil are you talking about? You know as well as I do, Damio. Those were your plans. When the Irishman tried to escape, the only exit would be through the residence. He would be seen, he would be caught, and he would be made to pay for his crime. That's the way you planned it, isn't it? Isn't it, Damio? Then you will collect your money, and this little enterprise will have cost you nothing, but will bring you a great profit. What is she up to? Let me handle her. Now, Sophia, my dear. When you talk like that, Damio, I am instantly suspicious. Now, don't try and creep up to me. You see, I have a torch, too. A very powerful torch. Put that light out. I can see exactly where the three of you are. Now, Damio, you see where I am standing, do you? Damio, she knows. She's standing at the lever. For goodness sake, go to her and stop her. What lever is this? I don't know what you're talking about. She knows, Damio, she knows. I can hear every word you say. It echoes along here as if it was a telephone. I know all about the lever, Henrik. I know everything. If I pull it down, dynamite will explode, and that will be the end of the tunnel. All very clever. As you say, Danilo, planned perfectly. Is all this true? Of course it's not. Don't listen to her, Irishman. Don't listen to her words, she says. Danilo, take this gun. Right. I'll shine the torch. The moment it strikes her, shoot. Hey, now, wait a minute. You can't do that. Be part of this, Irishman. Nothing to do with you. Now, Danilo, are you ready? Right. Now! Oh, very clever, weren't you, Henrik? <coughs> you missed. Now it's my turn. See how you like this. Well, Sophia's dead. And we can't get out. We have to go on. She's dead. Was that the way it was going to be with me? I swear to you, I know nothing of this. You're even trickier than I thought you were. Now, look, let's not stand here and talk about this. We've got no time to waste. That explosion is going to bring the people running. I don't want them to check up on the tunnel and find us here. Now, you lead the way, Henrik. 
Tell us once we're out of the bedroom of the president. Uh, it's around this corner now. Right out there, see? There's a light covering of earth. Dig that away, and the floorboards will be exposed. Good. And there's the spade already in waiting. All we have to do is to scratch the earth away. Shh, not so much noise. Now, yeah, look. There you are. There's the floorboards. Push the boards up and see, but for pity's sake, be quiet about it. I don't want to go through with this. But we've paid you, you must. All right. All right, I'll do it. But I'm watching the two of you, don't forget that. I'm watching the two of you closely. Will you push up those floorboards for pity's sake? We can't delay any longer. All right. I'm going through now. in a large bedroom. It was ornate and exquisitely furnished. A great chandelier shone down on me. I found I was in a corner of the room. And in the center was a great canopic bed. There was someone lying on it. Someone lying very still. Otherwise, the room seemed empty. I remember feeling Damio push me, and I heard him whisper, Quickly, quickly get moving, don't just stand there. I tiptoed across the room. The whole place seemed deathly quiet. I didn't like it. It was too easy. I found myself at the side of the bed. The man who lay there was in what seemed a deep sleep. He was old, and his face was dead white. His eyes closed and his mouth slightly open. I stood there appalled. It seemed ruthless and cruel to kill someone who was so frail and so defenseless. Then I heard the door open, and a voice called out. Who are you? What are you doing here? Uh, now, now, don't you get into a panic, ma'am. You just take it easy. Who are you? What are you doing Look, here? Look, I'm not going to hurt anyone. I, I've come in here by mistake. By mistake? But those floorboards, you pushed those floorboards up. Who are you? I ask you again, who are you, and what are you doing here in this room at this time? Who gave you permission to come? Who gave it to you? I will forget the dramatics, Anna, my dear. Damio de Braga. So, so they were right when they said I had to be aware of you. What do you want, Damio? Who is this man? Why are you here? You know quite well why I'm here, Anna. This is something that should have been done oh so long ago. You mean... I mean your husband. Kill him? It'll be very quick and very mercifully done. The Irishman is an expert. Get on with it, Buffy. Get on with it quickly now. You, you, you mustn't touch him. You mustn't go near him. Now, no, wait a minute, Anna. I won't allow you to. I won't. Keep quiet. No. Grab her, Henrik. Yes, just... grab her and keep oh. her quiet. We don't want him woken up. But don't try to stand. You don't. <laughs> quiet, you. Quiet. Leave me alone. Leave me alone, I say. Quiet. <laughs> quickly, my boy, quickly. Use a pillow. That'll be the best thing and the quickest. A pillow, quickly, quickly. I grabbed a pillow almost automatically. Then I stood and looked at the old man. He was so defenseless, so old and so frail, I, I found I couldn't do it. And then Damio grabbed it from me. Fool! Fool that you are! Here, let no, me do it. No! No! Oh, will you tell us to stop? Henrik, for goodness sake, control her! Quiet, you! So, this is the way we do things, Murphy. This is the way a man who plans perfectly follows through those plans. I couldn't look. Suddenly I wanted no part of this crazy charade. This was more a nightmare to me than reality. And then, with a smile, Damio straightened his back and threw the pillow to one side. Well, it's all over. It was so very simple, so very quiet. It was only then that I suddenly realized with a shock of horror the woman was dead as well. I looked at the two men. There was no compassion or pity on their faces. They both had a job to do, and they'd done it. Excellent. Now, let's get out of here as quickly as we can. Try this door here. Ah, that's it. The place seems deserted. Everything's worked out perfectly. Now, come on up this passage. This time, tomorrow night, I'll be here. I'll be the president. This will all be mine. Just shows you if you have ambitions, there's nothing to stop you, is there, Henrik? Absolutely nothing. The world is yours. It's in the palm of your hand, providing you know how to make the world work for you. I think this is the way out over here. 
Hang on. There's someone coming. That door. Against the wall. Back in the shadows here. We cowered back in the shadows and the door opened. There were at least eight men, dressed in black and looking very solemn. Ahead of them was a priest. They walked down the passage. And almost opposite us, this priest looked up and he saw Daniel. Daniel de Braga? You've come? Yes. Yes, I was... Uh... I was, um, I, I've just seen, I've just spoken to the president. He requested I come here. He, uh, he had some matter of importance to discuss with me. He, he had some matter of importance to discuss. You have just spoken with him? Well, of course, yes, yes. He was all right? Of course he was all right. He was perfectly all right. But I... Well, he, he's gone through to his, to his bedroom now with his wife. I see. Well, if you, uh... If you'll excuse me... Uh, Before you do, Daniel, who is this man here? Uh, a friend. Samuel Murphy, an Irishman. He's a journalist. He wished to interview the president. That's why we came. To interview the president? Yes, that is correct. Daniel, there is something very strange going on. Very strange indeed. What do you mean, strange? I have been called by the doctor and by the president's lady. You see, Daniel... He died not half an hour ago. I felt I wanted to laugh. In fact, I think I did. Because I found them looking at me shocked and surprised. Damio didn't say a word. And I remember shouting hysterically, He planned, Father! He planned perfectly! But don't you understand? Damio de Braga didn't plan for this. Time. The silent herald of life and death. Success or failure. The unseen force that measures man's destiny, reaching its most fateful moment as it slowly strikes. The 11th. Oh.